Hello and welcome to this free webinar and training for Microsoft Data Modeling. This has been brought to you by Dynamics 365 Pros and Tech Quantum. My name is Paresh Sharma. I'm a Principal Consultant Business Architect. I've been working in this domain for over uh, more than 16 years now and I have implemented a lot of projects in Dynamics 365 Business Central which was previously known as Dynamics Nav and also in Dynamics 365 Customer Engagement. I'm also a blogger. You can find me on techquantum.com and 365pros.com. I'm in the middle of merging both of these so that we can have one area. Similarly, I have a lot of content in my YouTube channel, Tech Quantum and 365 Pros. I'm mostly active on Tech Quantum at the moment, and there are a lot of free contents. And if you like that, please do subscribe to the channel. Well, moving on to the agenda of this webinar. Well, Dataverse, or the common data service as it was known previously, is the underlying um, data platform for the Power Platform and some of the Dynamics 365 apps that we are going to also discuss in this webinar session. Now, creating data model is one of the most important steps when creating a business application. So we will look at modifying the data model to meet the business requirements. We will also explain how the schema for Dataverse uh, can be extended with tables, relationships, and columns, etc. The different column types will be explained and you will also learn how to use solutions to manage your changes. In a nutshell, the agenda of this webinar is going to be understanding of common data model, introduction to Dataverse, uh, introduction to solutions, and changing the data model. So stay tuned. Now, a major problem when building system is migration and the integration of data. Now, to address the problems of incompatible data types, unknown data value ranges, and terminology differences, Microsoft has created a shared data language and specification for use by a wide range of business applications and processes. This specification is the common data model. In short form, it's also called CDM. Now, the common data is supported in Dataverse, Dynamics 365, Power Apps, Power BI, and Azure Data Services. It is not simply a series of data types or a list of attributes, but it is a set of schemas uh, in standard notation. So the common data model is not a database. It is a set of schemas that define tables, columns, and relationships, as well as their properties. Now, the common data model has a core of schema consisting of about 20 business entities, for example, accounts, contacts, currencies, and tasks. Now, the core schema is then extended by other schemas for use in apps and services. For example, uh, the CRM foundation and the sales schemas are added to the core schema to define the schemas of Dynamics 365 sales. So there is a core schema of around 20 tables. And then above that, there is a schema for specific applications. There are schemas for Dynamics 365 apps. There are schemas for a growing number of accelerators, including nonprofit, healthcare, and automotive industries. Now, if you want to know more about common data model, and if you go to docs.microsoft.com, then you will have more information about this common data model. And this is the image that has been sourced from there. Over here, you can have more information about common data model, like what is common data model, what are the main uh, tables involved in common data model, why you can use the common data model, so on and so forth. So there are a lot of resources available in docs.microsoft.com. Please go ahead and have a look at that link as well. Now let's try to understand why common data model is important. Now the common data model defines various properties of tables, columns, and relationships. Now these properties are more than just the name or the data type. They are actually the range of values that display names and traits such as whether they are editable, mandatory, or can be set to null values. Now this metadata can be leveraged by apps to affect how uh, you know, the users interact with the data. Dynamics 365 and Power Platform apps makes use of this metadata 
to control and improve the user experience. Now, Microsoft realized in this course that others also have valuable contributions to make when it comes to creating a shared data language. And therefore, it has opened the common data model to others via the Open Data Initiative. So what is this Open Data Initiative? Let's have a look. All right, so Open Data Initiative. Well, Microsoft has made the common data model extendable. What does this mean? Well, this means that other interested parties can contribute their data definitions to the common data model. For example, the accelerator schemas have been created in consultation with industry and implementation partners, for example, healthcare. Now, anyone can contribute to the common data model as it is an open source in GitHub. For example, independent software vendors can and are adding their own data models to the common data model. If you want to have access to that GitHub, you can click on this particular link, github.com Microsoft slash CDM. If you go over here, you can see the repository over here in GitHub, and you can find much more information about the contributors and the data model schema. So please do go to that link. If you're a technical person, you will be much more interested over here and see the repository. Now, on the other hand, as you may already know, Adobe and SAP have joined with Microsoft in the Open Data Initiative using the common data model to make the integration of the data between applications and platform far simpler in the future. Now, one example of implementation of common data model is the Dataverse, which was also called as common data service before. So next, we are going to look at what is Dataverse. So let's talk about Microsoft Dataverse and what is inside the box. Well, the Dataverse is the data services platform for Dynamics 365 and Power Platform. Now, this was previously known as Common Data Service. And uh, once you know the branding was changed from Common Data Service to Dataverse, there are several changes uh, to the terminology, especially if you're working with Dynamics 365 CRM, uh, you would now note that uh, the tables were formerly known as entities, columns, which were formerly known as fields, rows were formerly known as uh, records, uh, choices were formerly known as option sets, and now yes and no fields are formerly known as uh, two options. So there have been several changes in the terminology. I would highly recommend that you refer to docs.microsoft.com uh, to be aware of the latest uh, terminology. Now, um, a database database uh, contains the standard tables, columns, and relationships as defined by the schema definitions in the common data model, as we discussed in our previous slides. However, uh, the Dataverse is more than just a data store. It is a secure platform that provides services to the applications such as security, automation, integration, and business logic. And more importantly, the Dataverse is extendable. So you can easily add to the data model that match your business needs and processes. If you want to know more about various aspects of Dataverse like security, logic, data, storage, and integration, uh, I would highly recommend you to go to docs.microsoft.com from where this image also has been sourced. And you can click on the link over here and you can know much more about what the whole Dataverse is all about. Um, you know, uh, how you define the data, how you can customize, apply business logic, and also you will find a lot of resources for developers as well. So take some time and also read through these resources from docs.microsoft.com. So now let's discuss some of the benefits of Dataverse. Now the Dataverse removes the need to manage the database. So that means you do not need to be a database administrator. Microsoft automatically handles activities such as backup and optimization so that you can focus on creating and using data model rather than administering the database. Now, using Dataverse as the data store for your applications or to build your apps on has many benefits. For example, managed data in the cloud. Now, you do not need to perform backups or configure the database as this is done for you by Microsoft. 
So what about storage? Well, you do not need to worry about how the data is stored as Microsoft takes care of this for you as well. What about security, which is very important? Well, all data is encrypted at rest as well as in transit. And as far as metadata is concerned, properties you define on your data model are used by Dynamics 365 and Power Apps, speeding the building of the apps. What about data access? Well, you can control who accesses the tables, rows, and columns. And what about auditing? Well, you can track who accessed and who changed the data. As far as user interface uh, elements are concerned, uh, components for model-driven apps such as forms, views, charts, and dashboards are created and stored in the Dataverse. As far as the logic is concerned, uh, calculations, rules, and validations can be added to fields and applied automatically. As far as processes are concerned, your business uh, processes can be added to ensure data quality and perform automation. As far as import and export of data is concerned, there are various tools that you are already acquainted with, for example, Excel and Microsoft Word. Is it scalable? Of course, Dynamics 365 applications are built using the Dataverse and support tens and thousands of users, so it's definitely scalable. And what are the skills required? Well, you do not need to be a database administrator to manage the Dataverse, so you can just focus on creating and expanding the data model. Now let's talk about Dynamics 365 apps and Dataverse. Now when you install Dynamics 365 apps for the first time, a new environment and a database is created. Now the database schema is created using the schemas in the common data model. Now what is important as far as the rest of this training is concerned is that customizing Dynamics 365 apps is performed by customizing the Dataverse that the Dynamics 365 apps runs on. And for the purpose of customization, you can think of a Dynamics 365 app such as Dynamics 365 for Sales as just a model-driven app. It has the same customization and extensibility capabilities as any custom model-driven app that you may create. You can build new apps against the Dynamics 365 entities or add entities to the Dynamics 365 apps as well. Now, this training is all about customizing the Power Platform and the skills that you gain in Power Platform are transferable to Dynamics 365 as well as vice versa. Now, there are some technical details as to how the Dataverse is implemented that you need to be familiar with. Let's have a look in our next slide. Now, let's understand the technologies used in the Dataverse. Now, Power Platform environments in your Microsoft 365 tenant can optionally have a Dataverse database. You can add a Dataverse database when creating an environment, or you can add a database later. However, each environment can only have one Dataverse database. Now, as discussed earlier, the Dataverse is a cloud data store which is based on Azure SQL, Azure Data Lake, and Azure Blob Storage. And the way you interact with Dataverse is via Power Apps Maker Portal. That is, if you type this URL make.powerapps.com and log in with your 365 credentials, you will land up on the Power Apps Maker Portal where you can customize the Dataverse database. And we will have a look at that in a short while. Now, the Dataverse provides data and services to applications as shown in this diagram. Now, the rest of this training will address many of these application services. However, before we start customizing the Dataverse, you will need to be able to manage your changes. And how do you manage your changes? Well, to be able to manage work and control the changes, we employ something called as solutions. And that we can do from the Power Apps Maker portal. So let's just go ahead and have a look. Now, here I am in my Dynamics 365 environment. Now, if I want to make any changes to the Dataverse a database behind this or customize this model-driven app or make some changes to it, well, then I need to go to the Power Apps Maker Portal. And the way I go over there is type in the URL make.powerapps.com and log in with your Dynamics 365 credentials. 
Now, obviously over here, I am logged in in a demo environment. So I am logged in as a system administrator. Now, the first thing that when you log into the Power Apps Maker portal is to see which environment you are in. So right now it's showing me Contoso default. This is not my environment. My environment is this one, CRM 851075 at the moment, which is a demo environment. And this is the Power Apps Maker portal where you make the changes. Obviously, this is the home page where you can see some information. Uh, you can click on learn to go to guided learning, see some help topics, and also join the Power Apps community as well. And when you click on apps, uh, this will show you all the custom apps and the standard apps that you have access to, which would be model driven apps or canvas apps or portal apps. And if you click on create, it will show you there are three ways of creating um, or make an app. Uh, you can make canvas app from blank. You can make model driven apps from blank. You can also make portals from blank. You can even start uh, creating app starting from the data and you can see all the data sources or you can even use one of the pre-built templates and then make your apps uh, over it. Now, there are some other links like flows uh, where you can have all your power automate and flows available, chatbots, AI builders and solutions. Now, before we come to the solutions, let's check this um, Dataverse area. If you click over here, you will see that there are many components like tables, choices, data flows, Azure Synapse, link connections, so on and so forth. Now, if you click on tables, here you can see all the tables available in the system, uh, which can range from core tables, your standard tables, uh, uh, productivity tables, uh, your custom tables as well. And if you click on the table here you will find all the columns associated with that table now columns were previously known as fields so if you have been working with crm for some time now you need to get acquainted with this new terminology as well all the relationships are stored over here business rules views you can find all the forms related to this table uh, dashboards charts keys commands and data now everything um, that is related to that table or if you extend this table and create your custom views or forms or columns, you know, everything is stored in this Dataverse. So this is the one place where you will find everything. Now, whenever you create a new environment, a default solution is also created. So you can directly make changes over here, which is okay. Um, however, if you want to manage your solution as a package, and if you want to be able to identify your custom changes easily and manage them as well in a controlled manner, um, you can create something called a solution. So if you click solutions over here, you will see all the solutions available in the system. Uh, obviously, it's a demo environment, so you'll find much more uh, solutions available. However, if you scroll down, you will see that there is a default solution, uh, this one. Okay, and this is created when um, you create a new environment. And this default solution contains all the tables, um, you, you know, the columns and everything uh, is available, which is part of this whole environment, right? And it also creates common data services default solution. Now, this is a blank solution. So you can make changes in the default solution. Well, uh, that is an option or you can add your custom changes to the common data services default solution. Or you can create your own solution, name that, and manage your own customizations, which I think is the preferred way. Now, as far as solution is concerned, uh, you can consider a solution as a set of components that provides a functionality that meets a business requirement. So for example, if you are creating a a functionality for a particular business requirement, you can create a solution, manage all your customizations over there and package that. And you can also export that and import in your production environment as well. So it's easy to manage that way. Now, solutions are a method of grouping together a set of components so that you can customize them and then transfer these components from one environment to another. Solutions also allow for independent software vendors to package up their products and control what their customers can do with the components contained in the solutions, which therefore offers some kind of protection to their intellectual property. 
Now, solutions have several benefits to help you manage your changes and deployment process. Well, first of all, you operate on a subset of components, reducing the need to scroll through all the components. So a standard uh, default solution will contain all the components. So when you're creating a small functionality, uh, you would not like to export all or package all the components available in the default solution. Rather, you will create your own solution, use only the components that you uh, want and then package them. So solutions can be exported and they're imported into another environment for testing or for deployment into a production environment. And the exported solution package will only contain the components in the solution that you process. Uh, and hence the package file will be smaller and will import much more quickly. Also the exported solution package files can be stored in your change control system so that you can maintain your versions. And the imported solutions can be rolled back to a previous version, but there would be some limitations to it. Now, to be able to differentiate between solutions from different providers, each solution must have a publisher. What is that? Let's have a look. So here I am in my Power Apps Maker portal. And first we need to check if we are in the right environment. We are. And we can click on solutions and then we can click on new solutions to create a new solution. But before we can do that, we need to create a new publisher. That is to differentiate um, you know, solutions created by different providers. So let's go ahead and do that. So click on new solution. And over here, you will have a quick create form where you can first select a publisher. Now, as you can see, we do not have a publisher that we want. Um, I want to create a publisher named Tech Quantum. So I can click on new publisher and this will open another quick create form to create a publisher. Now, the purpose of the publisher record is to show who created the solution. And especially for uh, independent software vendors, it is linked to their company in Microsoft App Source. Now the publisher has a name and a prefix, okay? And this prefix is used when creating a new components within a solution. That means if you create a new entity, um, the prefix will be added to the schema name of that entity. So basically the purpose of prefix is to prevent clashes between different vendors and between your customizations or any new components added in later versions of the Power Platform. Now, it is strongly recommended that you create your own publisher with a unique prefix. And that particular prefix will uniquely identify your customization as this will prevent clashes between different suppliers. So let's just go ahead and create a name and a unique prefix. Now, as a display name, what I can say is uh, it is Tech Quantum. And again, I can provide the same name or let's say the schema name as Tech Quantum. Now, optionally, you can also provide a description. Let's just get Tech Quantum over here. And then you need to provide your own unique prefix. Now, please note that when you create a new publisher, um, this prefix new -E is the default prefix that is provided. But we are not going to use this because this is used by the system itself. So we will uh, use the prefix, let's say TQ. And over here, you can see a preview of that. That means whatever object you create, um, your TQ underscore will be added as a prefix. Now, additionally, you can also use your number series for uh, choice value prefix. That means, uh, for example, if you create option sets or something, then um, the number will begin with 10,000 or whatever number you specify, let's say 20,000 or something. All right, so that is uh, that you can choose over here. We'll just leave it as it is and click on save. Now I'm back again in my new solution page. And if I uh, drop down on publisher, you will note that now the Tech Quantum publisher is available. So that means I can now go ahead and create my own solution. So let me just say uh, I provide Tech Quantum and specify that as my core solution and uh, the name is automatically provided and the publisher let me choose as tech quantum and the version is my first version now there are more options over here 
where you can specify your configuration page and description and package type right now it's unmanaged if you used a managed solution it would mean that you won't be able to or the client would not be able to make changes to your code especially this is useful for isvs to protect their intellectual property okay so right now we'll just go ahead and click on create to create the solution so now over here you can see that a solution named tech quantum core is created and if i go into this uh, new solution i will be able to add the components that i want in this solution and when i create a package only those components or objects will be included that I add in this particular solution, which will be small, precise, subset, and will be easy to manage. Now, once we have created our solution, uh, it's a blank solution. Now it's time for us to either add existing components and customize them or create our new components. Now, before we go ahead and do that, I would like to mention something over here. Just like me, if you have been working in Dynamics 365 CRM for a longer time, well, uh, then you must be used to the classic environment. So right now, both classic and modern Power Apps environment are available where you can work on. So if you want to access the classic environment, you can click on uh, uh, the three dots over here and click on the switch to classic button. So once you do that, it will take you to the classic environment where you can add existing components or you can create new components. Now, what are these components? Well, components are, are the collective names given to individual items that you might like to customize in your dataverse. So um, there are entities. Well, in the modern application, these entities are called as tables. Okay. And you can add entities or tables. Uh, you can add option sets. Well, the option sets are now called, um, if you go to new, and see then they are called choices okay so you need to get used to <clears throat> the new terminology as well so you can add various components entities um option sets also called as choices web resources processes uh you know dashboards applications so you can either uh, create uh, a new component or you can add existing component from the uh, environment itself now, this was one way to access the classic environment. The other way would be if you are on your CRM uh, application, uh, click on the settings and go to advanced settings. And once you are in your advanced settings, you can click on settings and click on solutions. And over here, you will find the tech quantum solution that we had created from the Power Apps portal. So you can access it from here as well. Click over there and you will be taken to the classic environment. All right. So you can either work from here or you can work from the modern power apps uh, maker portal i would suggest to work from the modern power apps maker portal because that is the way to go ahead all right so now we are clear of what solution is and what components are so let us just go ahead and uh, see an entity relationship diagram where i have a short example where we can have some of our custom tables and columns and some related tables Let's just visualize the entity relationship diagram and try to replicate that and create it over here in our system. Now the Dataverse data store in your environment will contain a standard set of tables. Now, which and how many tables will depend on whether you include any Dynamics 365 application. Now it will be rare that the tables provided will meet your business requirements and you will need to add to the data model provided. So in this section, we will look at creating tables, relationships and columns to create the data model to support your application. And we will look at the options for creating these and how to create and edit these components. So the first step is to decide on the entities, relationships and fields that you require. This is known as a data modeling. Now, when we talk about data modeling, data modeling is the process of identifying tables, columns, and relationships. Now, it's the responsibility of the solution architect to define the data model, whereas a functional consultant may assist in the data modeling process. Now, one of the key activities in initial stages of any of your project is to create a high-level entity relationship diagram, or ERD, which shows the entities and their relationships. 
An ERD helps the project team and business stakeholders to understand the data in your system and how it relates to other data. So data modeling sounds simple, but it is anything but simple. At the base level, at least, it involves identifying the reuse of existing tables and then identifying new tables, also determining the ordinality and cardinality of relationships between the tables and choosing columns and their respective data types. You will use these techniques such as data normalization uh, to help you guide in the building of your ERD. Now you need to verify that your entity relationship diagram supports all your reporting requirements, that your end-to-end -end processing of data can be handled by the data model and that the system will not be overly complex because of your data model. Now you will get better at data modeling and find it easier with experience. Now the following diagram is an example of uh, entity relationship diagram for a simple requirement where an organization that manages the rental of flows within a buildings and needs to track how much space is occupied in their building. Now this kind of entity relationship diagram you can create quite easily with the use of Visio. So let's just have a look at that. So here we are in our Visio with the entity relationship diagram. Now here you can see that we have three tables, building, country, and floor. And each table has their columns with the data type determined over here, okay? So in this case, we have one to many relationship between country and building, and we have one to many relationship between building and floor. Now, there are several key decisions that have to be made over here. The first decision is, do you want to use a common data model standard table, or do you want to create a custom table? Then you have to determine uh, the relationship do you want to use one to one, one to many, many to one, or many to many relationships? Again, if you're using many to many relationship, you also need to determine, do you need to create a custom table to resolve that thing? Again, you also want to determine if your reference data has to be stored in um, as choices, that is option sets, or do you want to create a separate uh, table for that? You also need to decide if the table would be an activity type table. Another thing that you need to decide is, will you be integrating external data or will you be using virtual tables? So understanding data model is very important for a functional consultant. Now, the tools in Power Platform do not allow you to visualize the data model. So as a functional consultant, you should be able to draw the entity relationship diagram and you should use whatever you have available to create an ERD. For example, you can use paper and pen, a whiteboard, or Microsoft Visual if you have the license. And you can also use third-party tools such as um, uh, Lucid Chart and XRM Toolbox. So for example, if you um, use this link for Lucid Chart, you will land up in this page. Um, you can sign up for free or log in if you already have an account. And then you can use this tool to create a flow chart or an entity relationship diagram. Similarly, if you click on this link for XRM Toolbox, now this is a very popular toolbox which has a lot of tools and is also maintained by the community. So you can go over here and then you can download the latest version which is available. And uh, if you search for the tools, um, either by downloading it or if you can also search over here, you will find that there are some tools available to create entity relationship diagram. So if I just search for ERD over here, now there is one tool which creates an entity relationship diagram and generates that in the visio or if you search for entity relationship diagram you can find some more tools available which will create um, uh, a diagram over here for you and then you can save it as a png or jpg okay so let's just go ahead and create all the tables and columns that we had uh, designed in our entity relationship diagram so over here, uh, we have three tables, country, building, and floor, and then we have columns with their data types available. Now, let me just go ahead and create the country table first because this is used as a lookup over here. So once I create country, I will then create building, and then I will go ahead and create the floor, okay? So to do that, I will click on new, and then go to table, and then it will ask me to create a new table and then I can provide a display name country over here. And you will see that the plural name is automatically um, 
provide it and then uh, if you want you can provide some short description uh, for this particular table so let's say this table contains a list of countries that uh, you know where we have the rental properties now if you want to be able to attach a note or files in the timeline then you can select this option so we'll just go ahead and select that option because maybe there are some files that we would like to attach over here now there are some advanced options if you click over here you will see that the schema name is generated automatically and you will see that the prefix tq underscore is also provided automatically and this is based on uh, the prefix setting that we did when we were creating a solution now the type of this table is standard if you want you can also create an activity or a virtual table and for the record ownership i would say this should be accessible to everyone in the organization so i will just set up organization level uh, record ownership and there are some more settings where you can choose the image you can choose colors and there are some table specific settings available over here we'll just go ahead and click on save and once the table is saved it is created over here and available in the solution so now we'll go ahead and create the columns in the table so for that we can click on the table and here you will see that there are some more options where I can create columns, relationships, business rules, so on and so forth. Also, I can add columns, I can add subcomponents, or I can add required components as well. Now, you will notice that there are some standard uh, columns which are created automatically by the system. And also, uh, whenever you create a custom table, you will note that an ID field that is a unique primary key field is automatically created. Now in our case, our display name should be country ID. So what I can do is I can just go ahead, double click on this and then just change the name to country ID and uh, it's searchable and then I can click on done. Now let me just go ahead and create two more columns, country name and country code. So I can click on add column and I can say country name which is a text field so there are other data types over here which you can choose from but this one is a text field obviously this is an optional field if you want this field to be mandatory then you would need to select uh, this required field as required if you select optional well the, the client can choose to uh, not to provide the value in this field if it is recommended then the field will be uh, marked with a blue tick where the user would know that it would be good to provide information, but again, it's still not mandatory. But if you click on required, then that field becomes mandatory and uh, the user will not be able to proceed further or save the record if he or she does not provide a value. In our case, it's an option right now. If I want, I can make it searchable. Also, I can uh, provide some description which will, which will act as a tooltip for that particular field. That means on the form, if you hover your mouse on the field, it will uh, show the description that you provide over here. So optionally, you can go and provide that as well, which is uh, best practice as well. So I'll just click on done for now. And then I will go ahead and add another uh, column called country code. Again, this is a text field and I will click on done. And here um, I have created all the columns. So I'll just go ahead and save the table. So now my country table is ready and I can go ahead and uh, create my building table and also use this country table as a lookup over here. Okay, so I can go ahead and create a new table again. And this time I will provide the name as building and I can provide a description saying this table contains a list of buildings. Uh, enable it for attachment and click on save. Now to create columns, obviously I can click on the building and then you will notice that the unique uh, primary field is created, the building ID, but my name is building ID over here. So I can go ahead and double click on this and change the name to building ID and click on done. I have to create a country ID as a data type of lookup, which should look up to the country table that we created, okay? So I will click on add column and say country ID and then in the data type I will choose this as a lookup field and as soon as I choose that as a lookup field it will ask me the related table so I can click on the drop down here over here and then search for the country table 
and uh, here is the country table that I had created. Again, um, the required field is optional over here. Let's just keep it optional. If we want uh, it to be mandatory, we'll, we can come back and change the settings as well. So I'll just click on done. So what I will do now is go ahead and create all the columns in the building table and also create a table floor and create those columns as well and then come back. Okay, so over here I have gone ahead and created all the three tables that we had created in our entity relationship diagram. That is the building, the country and the floor. Now one thing to notice, for example, if I go to my building table and look at the columns, you remember that we had created this building name field and that we had it created because of our entity relationship diagram. We had the building name field over here. Similarly, we had country name and floor name. But what happens is when you create a, a new uh, table, then uh, just like uh, an ID field, a uh, default primary name column is also generated. So what we can do over here is that just rename this and reuse uh, this particular default um, column and uh, not create a different building name over here. Okay, so what I can do is I can select this and actually delete this column and then go ahead and rename this column and reuse this column as well. So let's say building name and then click on done. And once I've done that, I can click on save table and the changes will be saved. The same changes I have done for country table and also the floor table. Now, when you are on your CRM application, so for example, if I go to my CRM application over here, on the left hand side on the site maps, you can see that there are uh, various tables and then each table have their own icons over here. All right, so that is the table image that you need to select in your settings. So um, if I go to my Power Apps Maker Portal and let's say if I go to my Buildings table and if I click on Settings, then over here under the Advanced Options, I can go ahead and choose a table image. So right now I do not have a table image in the system to choose from, so I can create a new image web resource. So if I click over here, now this will ask me to upload an image for best results. Please upload an SVG image. So I already have an SVG image for my building. So let me just upload that. So if I click on upload and then if I click on uh, buildings here and then click on open. So once you have uploaded the image, please provide a display name. Let's say I provide a building. Now over here you will notice that the schema name is not generated automatically. So you have to provide it over here. And the type that we had uploaded is vector format, that is SVG. So once we have done that, we can click on save. All right, so over here you can see that in the choose table image, we have the building image that we have created. And then we can click on save to save the changes to the table. Now, similarly, I have gone ahead and also done the same thing for country and floor tables as well. Okay, so what we have done till now is created all the three tables and the columns associated with those tables. And now you can view all those tables over here in the solution. So over here in the tables, you can see all the three tables that we have created. And obviously, if you go within the tables, you can see all the other components. Now, before we go ahead and change the other components, for example, forms, views, business rules, what I want to do is I want to first create a user interface that is the model driven app. And I want all these three tables to be available in my sitemap navigation. And over there, um, if I see that if there is anything that I need to change, I can come back over here and add those components so we can visualize while we are making the changes. OK, so um, if you want to create the apps, what you can do is click on new, go to apps. And over here, we can click on model driven app. Now, the model driven app that you see over here is nothing but, for example, if you go to the sales app, so this is the model driven app and there are these other model driven apps uh, that are available in the system. So we are going to create a, such kind of app, okay? And it should be available over here within the apps and I can then select that. So over here, you have two options. You can go through the classic app designer 
or there is this new modern app designer which is in preview mode at the moment but let's just go ahead and select that okay so we'll click on uh, create so over here you need to provide um, the name for your model driven app so let's say for example I want to say this as building management and then optionally you can also give um, a short description so an app for building management and click on create so now the container for my model driven app is ready and what it's saying is that we can start by creating or adding a page so i can click on add a page over here and then it sort of gives me a, a wizard and some options using which i can create my model driven app so for example uh, do you want to use table based view and form this is the preview how it will look like or you can use the dashboard one where you can collect all the information from various tables and show that as a dashboard on your system or you can go ahead and create your own custom view now in this case i want the system to help me to create the model driven app so what i will do is uh, select the table based view and form and then click on next and here it asks me um, to select one or more tables so we are going to choose all the three tables that we have created so let's just search for building and then select this uh, then there is floor we can select this and then we can select country as well now we'll keep the show in navigation as selected uh, because we want all those three tables sh to show on the navigation sitemap all right so we'll click on add and here in this designer the best part is that it will show you a preview as well what you are configuring so for example now i know that this is how my um, model driven app would look like from inside where we have the standard navigation bar we have some options over here and on the navigation sitemap we have home recently used records and pin records as standard and also the tables that we selected to be visible on our sitemap now um, apart from this you can also see how this app would look like in various um, resolutions so for example in um, responsive screen it would look like something like this you can also see how it will look like on desktop so it would be something like this and then on tablet it would look something like this and also on phone it the app will look something like this so while you are configuring your app on the go you can also see or also preview how it will look like so that's the best part of this power app maker we have all the components that we needed at the moment all right so what i will do is um, save this for now so my app is saved but in order to be able to use this app i need to publish this so when i publish the app it is now available for all the other users from the apps they can select uh, this building management and can start using it now in order to use this app i can either go to my crm workspace and then click over here and i can select building management from here okay so if i select that the building management app that i just created will be available over here the other way is that from the power apps maker itself while you're designing the app you can also see that there is a play button over here so if you click on uh, play button it will open that in the environment and it will di directly take you to the app now here we can see a couple of things we have our navigation we have our sitemap navigation pane on the side where we have all our tables available over here and you will also notice that it shows the vector icons that we had configured for each of the table all right so I can go to buildings, I can go to countries, I can go to floors. And right now, obviously, since there are no records, so you cannot see anything over here. Okay. And by default, whenever you create a new table, there are some uh, views that are created. And those are active and inactive views. So an active view shows you all the active records where the status of a record is in active state. And in case you deactivate any record, they will be available in the inactive uh, view. Okay, so similarly, if you go to buildings, you will see active buildings and inactive buildings. And similarly, if you go to floors, you will see active floors and inactive floors. So let's just go ahead and try to create a new record. So I will go to countries and I will click on new. Now, the first thing that I observe is that it takes me to a form where we have one field. Well, um, in our entity relationship diagram, if I can bring that forward, you will notice that for countries, we had two other fields, country name and country code. So I have the country name here, 
but not the country code but i want this country code to also be visible over here so in that case what i will do is i will go to my power apps make a portal i will go back to my solution and then i will go to the country uh, table and drill down on that and then i will go to forms so whenever you create a new table there are default forms that are created one is the card form one is the main form that we are going to edit and one is the quick view form now you can use quick view form to configure your view fields and search fields as well we'll come to that later so right now over here i will go to the main form uh, which is visible to the user click over here and then it will show me a preview of the form that the user sees right so so right now as you can see i only have country name available over here but I want um, the country code to also be visible. So what you can do is click on form field and from the list of available fields, you can select uh, the relevant field. So here I have country code. What I can do is click on this and drag it under the country name. And there you go. The country name and country code is now visible. So now um, the person can add a country name as well as the country code while creating a new record. And this is the timeline feature which is available in the system where you can attach your notes and sort of maintain a history for that uh, record as well okay so right now what i will do is click on save and then publish the changes now once i have published the changes i can go back to my crm and what i can do is Control f5 to refresh the form to see the changes and there you go you can see now we have country name as well as country code so what i can do now is uh, create a new record and I will say country name is Australia and the country code let's say is AU and save and close and I will create one more record let's say India and I will say IN save and close so when you save and close you will see that now you can see your records that you created in the view now you will notice that um, this view contains only the country name and created on uh, well i also want to see the country code in this view so what should i do in that case well in that case again i go back to my uh, power apps maker portal and this time for uh, the country table i will go to the view component okay so let me drill down to country and click on views and you will notice that there are uh, certain views that are created the only two views that i'm concerned of right now is active countries and inactive countries okay so if i click on active countries um, so i have the country name at the moment what i can do is drag the country code and add it over here so now i have country name and country code and created on in my view so i'll just save and publish this similarly i will go to the inactive countries view and then add the country code column in that particular view so i will select the country code and drag it over here after the country name save it and publish it all right so once i have done the change i can go to my form over here and then click on Control f5 to refresh and now you will notice that in this particular view we have country name and country code and create it on so Whenever a person comes over here and clicks on countries, uh, he will see all the these columns over here. So it's up to you what columns you want to display and you can configure it easily. Similarly, if you go to inactive countries, you will see that, you know, we have the column uh, country name and country code as we configured in the views. All right. So what I will do is I will go ahead and do similar changes to the forms and views for buildings as well as for flows. All right, so over here I have gone ahead and make the changes to the views and forms for uh, building and flow table. So uh, let's just see how that looks like. So if I go back to my apps over here, you can see countries and some data. If you click on buildings, you will see more columns over here in the views, both in active as well as an inactive uh, view. And same thing for floors. So you can see much more columns on each of the view. So now let's go ahead and add some data in the buildings, okay? So if I click on new, I will be able to create a new building record. This country ID is a lookup to the uh, table countries where we had set up some data. So if you click on this glass icon, you will see a list of countries uh, records that we have set up. In our case, we have done only two, 
all right and then you can select the country over here now imagine if there was a, a list of countries a, a lot of uh, records were there then you can also do one more thing you can start typing uh, the country and all the matching criteria will come up over here and then obviously it will be a shorter list to choose from right similarly you can do for let's say india and then see you can the filtering criteria will be applied and the list will be generated so in our case uh, let's just type in australia and the building name is brisbane sky tower building type is residential value let's say it's um, one billion dollars and the rental yield yearly let's say 48,000 and let's say the total area is 5,600 square meters and the number of floors is 90 floors and then over here I can save the record now when I'm specifying the total area obviously um, what is the unit that's not clear over here is it square meters feet whatever whatever that is what you can also optionally do is just change the label of uh, the column now to be able to do that what you can do is go to your designer again go to the columns and then search for that uh, column and which is this one total area and on the display name you can change the label let's say um, meter square and then and click on done and that that label will be available on the screen in this case I'll just leave it as it is at the moment and cancel that out and you will also notice that the owner field is populated by system administrator. The reason is because I have logged in to the environment as a system administrator. So whoever is um, editing the record or let's say creating the record, uh, his uh, user ID will be available over here. Okay. Now, for example, if you're working in a team and you want to assign this record to someone else uh, so that he or she uh, takes the responsibility of that record, then what you can do is use this option called assign. All right. So when you select assign to user or team, then in this particular field, you can look up to specific users or you can look up to uh, specific teams that are available in your system. If there are more teams, it will be displayed here. Now, if you assign to a user, obviously it goes to a particular user, but if you assign to a team, it means that anybody who is working in that team can uh, pick up this record or is responsible for this record or can edit this record okay so this is the feature that you can use and for example if this record was assigned to a particular person or a team you can also use the option assign it back to me and when you click on that it that record will be assigned to you all right so i'll just leave it as it is for now so what I've done over here is created two records for building. One is uh, Brisbane Sky Tower and one is Infinity. And the data that you see over here is hypothetical. So if you want to know the real value, well, go to Google. Um, all right, so we have this record. So for example, if we open this record and we see that there is one lookup, um, you know, to the country over here. That means if I go to this country's records and if I open Australia record then I do not want anybody to be able to delete this record because it is being used by other records as well so there's a dependency but see what happens over here so for example if I you know select this and click on delete the system will be able to delete the record which is not good in this in this case because what happens is now if I go to my buildings records and suppose they were like hundreds of records then all the value from the country id has been gone so the the link has gone and the data has gone so if you go to your solutions and let's say if you go to country relationship then you will see that this one uh, relationship which is created over here automatically as soon as you create a lookup record so when you open this you will see that there is this uh, one to many uh, relationship which is created and if you go to advanced option, you will see that there are two uh, fields over here, type of behavior and the delete. So there are three types of behavior. What is referential, parental and custom. And based on that, you know, there are delete options, a remove link or restrict link. Now, these two options only work when you select referential over here. All right. So let's first see what uh, these options actually mean. So when you select the option referential and 
remove link well any related records can be navigated to and action taken on one will not affect the other all right so in this case what we did is that um, you know we had the building record so it's still available but we were able to delete the country record and the link was also removed okay but if you select um, this option referential with restrict it will mean that any related records can be navigated to actions taken on parent record will not be applied to the child record but the parent record cannot be deleted while the child record exists in simple terms what will happen is that if I'm using uh, the country Australia with many of the building records, then I will not be able to delete the country until unless I delete the related records. That is the related building records. All right. If you select parental, just like over here, any action taken on the record of the parent table, that is country, is also taken on the related child records. That means if you delete country record, the related um, uh, you know, uh, records of building will also be deleted. And then again, there is custom where you can actually yourself define custom behavior for each possible action, uh, you know, that can be selected. And those are called cascading actions. We'll discuss that sometime later. If you go to docs.microsoft.com, you will see more information about the types of relationships and the cascading effects. So if you go over here in this link, it will take you to this topic, create a relationship between tables. However, if on the left hand side, you can see that there are many more topics that you can go through. All right. And it will take you through, uh, you know, many to one or one to many relationships, advanced options and the cascading effects. So I will highly recommend that you go through this resource and uh, learn more about uh, the relationships in tables. So having said that, let me just go to the countries again and create uh, the Australia record again right and provide au here click on save and close and i will go to the buildings and attach the lookup again over here australia save and close and over here australia save and close all right so we have two records uh, attached to the country australia but uh, we do not have anything which is attached to India. So um, if I now go to my Power Apps Maker and change the relationship, for example, over here, previously it was uh, referential plus remove link, right? Which was allowing me to delete uh, the country record even though it, has, it had related records. So what I will uh, do is just do a slight change over here and with referential, I will use restrict, okay? and say done and click on save table. All right, so once the changes are saved and published, I can go to my CRM and then I can open the country records and let's just go to the Australia record first, okay? So over here, from here, I can see how many related records are there. So for example, if I go on related and click on buildings, I can see that there are two records attached to this country Australia okay so now if I try to delete it should not let me delete because they are related records so for example if I go to click on delete click on delete over here then well the system gives me an out-of-the-box error message which says the record cannot be deleted because it is associated with another record so until unless I delete the related building records first I should not be able to delete this record, okay? So if I delete those, then I will be able to delete these records. To show you what the difference is, so if I go to this uh, country, India over here, if I click on related and buildings, you will see that there are no records associated with it. That means that there are no records that are dependent on it, so I should be able to delete this, uh, this record. So if I go and click on delete, and click on delete, well, the system will go ahead and delete the records. So that's how you can, uh, you know, configure the relationships and the cascading effects as well. All right. So having done that, what I want to do now is actually create some country records over here. Now I can either create that manually or you might already have some standard list with all the countries and the codes available. So it would be good to, uh, you know, import them in batch and save some time. So over here, I have a list of countries available with me, which are listed in a required format over here with country name and country code. 
and what I want to do is import this list in my country table. So in this case, what I can do is I can click on more and use import from Excel. I can actually also use export uh, selected records uh, if I want to export the data into an Excel worksheet. OK, so in this case, I want to import. So I will use the import from Excel function and this will open a wizard where I can choose the file and then select the file over here and then click on next. And then if you want, you can review the mapping. Review the mapping basically means uh, are the columns in the Excel file mapping to the fields uh, that you want to import into uh, Dynamics 365, all right? So in this case, it's all good. Um, I'm not worried about uh, duplicates, so I can just go ahead and click on Finish Import. So over here, what you can also do is click on Track Progress. So if you click on this, it will take you to another page. And here you can track the progress of your file, which is being processed at the moment. So if you click on refresh, um, it will show you the status. So right now it's submitted. And once it is done, it will be in the status completed. And here you can see uh, how many successful records have been processed. That is 247. There are no partial failures. There are no errors. And total process are 247. In case there are any errors, uh, you can actually click on the link and see what the error messages are and take appropriate action. So for now, what I will do is I will go to my records over here uh, and then click on refresh and it should bring up all the data. So you can see over here at the bottom. So um, in one page, it shows only 50 records and there are two total of 247 records uh, available at the moment. And similarly, you know, if you want to export uh, these records, um, you can just simply click on Export Excel. And whatever records are available within this view, all the 247 of them will be exported to the Excel, which you can see over here. OK. Um, so um, if you select it, however, and then click on Export Excel, it will only export the files which are selected. So just make sure of that if you want to export selected records or if you want to uh, you know export all the records okay so similar to countries what i've done is i've imported some buildings data over here and you will notice that i have added some new fields uh, for example height and ear and if you go into each of the record you will note that i have also added one more new field called notes with month line text as the data type and have imported some uh, data. So this is how actually you can import and export data. But as a user, for example, if I have more tables and sometimes I just want to create a new record and I like I don't want to add all the other details, just create a new record quickly and save it. In that case, I can make use of quick create form. And for example, wherever I am on the screen, I can click on the new uh, create a new record icon over here. And then I can choose the entity for which I want to create a quick record. And for example, country, then I will get a quick create form over here. I can quickly add the details and then save the records, right? Okay, so how do I create a quick create form? So let us just go to our Power Apps Maker portal. And then over here, let's just go to our buildings. And then you can go to forms. And over here, we can add a new form. So when we click on add form, you will see that there's a quick create form. So if you click over here, it will show you a quick create form for the building record. And then in the sections, you can add all the columns that you would like to see in the quick create form. So for example, over here, first of all, let me change the title of the section and I will say uh, building information. Okay. And then I can start adding form fields over here. So um, it will be country ID and then maybe building type, value, rental yield, height, total area, uh, maybe year, number of floors over here. And that should be enough. So I will cl click on save and then click on publish to publish my changes. So now if I go back to my buildings management app, I can click on the new uh, create new record um, button over here and then choose building. And as a user, I can specify uh, you know, the data quickly and click on save and close. So this is how you create a quick create form uh, for a table. Now, if you want to add um, image file to your records, well, you can do that as well. Let's take an example of countries, okay? 
and uh, for example if I open the Australia record over here what I would like to do is I would like to add uh, the flag image for that particular country so for example if you see out of the box contact records they have that functionality enabled so how we can do it for our custom table well in this case let's go to the power apps maker and let's go to country and by the way you can do this for any table and then go to columns let me add a column and then call it country image and then data type let me set that to image and is this a primary image well we can say it yes and click on done so once that is done i will save uh, the table and also if i go to the table and then click on settings and go to advanced options here you will see that the primary row image is set to country image okay and now if i go to my app and open a country record you will see that there is an image um, available over here well if i do not specify any image it will give me the initials but i can also click on it and it will ask me to choose an image i can upload a file over here and click on open and add the flag over here and here you can see now i have uh, the australia flag image available over here against this record I can do this to um, other records as well. So for example, if I go to India and I click here, choose an image and upload an image over here. And here you can see that the image is now available for this record as well. So this is how you can create a primary image for a record row. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and create some flow data. So I click on flows over here and then click on new. And then to create flow data, let me just select um, a building. So maybe Brisbane Sky Tower, let's say flow name, first floor, floor area, 563, occupation percentage, 100. All right. So I have created a flow data. What I want to do over here is as soon as I select building over here, I want to have a preview of building information. Well, I can click on this hyperlink and actually go to the building data, but I want to save some time, save some click time, and then have the information right in my flow record. So how do I do that? Well, I do that with the help of quick view form. So let's just see how we create that. So what I can do is right now, I'll just go ahead and delete this data for now. I go to my Power Apps Maker portal and then I go to tables and then I go to buildings and click on forms. And here you will see that there is a quick view form which is automatically created when I create a table, okay? So let's just go inside and see what all information can we show. So by default, there are a couple of fields which are all already selected for us, but we would like to show some more details as soon as I select a building in my flows data okay so let me just click on form field and then we would like to see country id uh, building name and then maybe building type and maybe the height and uh, maybe year as well Okay, so this is the information that I would like to see. And also, uh, if I can see some notes as well. Now, I would not like to see the owner uh, field over here. So if I delete this from here, you will see that it cannot be deleted because it's a required form field, okay? So the best I can do for this one is click on hide, and then that field will not be shown over here. So now I will go ahead and publish the changes. So once these changes are published, what I want to do is I want to show this building quick view form into my floors uh, record, okay? So for that, I need to go to the floor table. So over here, I go to floor, I go to forms, and then I click on the main form. Now on the floor form, as soon as I select building ID, I want to show the building information uh, from my building record, okay? So what I can do is I can click on component and I can select this quick view and drag it over here. 
And then since there is a one to end relationship between building and uh, floor, then I have the look of building ID and I can select the quick view form from that building ID. So if I select this and I click on done, you will see that a quick view form is available over here for the building information. All right. So um, I can go ahead and save and publish uh, this changes. And now let us see how this works on the app. So if I go to my building management app on the flows and if I click on new, so you will right now see that there's no information available. And as soon as I select my building, Brisbane Sky Tower, let's say, the building information is now available over here. Okay, so I can go ahead and create the data. Let's say um, first floor, floor area, 563 square meters, occupation percentage, 100%, and I can click on save. So the data that you see over here in the quick view form is being brought in from the buildings record based on the lookup that value that you select over here. Okay, and this is not created or edited on this form. As you can see that all these fields are locked over here. So this is how you can preview uh, data from another form on a separate record, okay? Now over here, we talked about the quick view form. There is another concept called uh, mapping. All right, so what mapping does is it lets you set default values for a record that is created uh, within the context of another record. So for example, if I go to Brisbane Sky Tower, let's say that's my primary record, and I go to related and I go to floors. So from within this primary record that is building, if I create a new a related record that is floor, then you will see that the building ID is automatically populated for the floor record. Now this is achieved by doing mapping, all right? So when you create a new related record from within the context of a primary record, the mapped data from the primary entity record is copied to the form for the new related entity record, in this case, building and form. So that means that you control what data is copied by adding new mappings in the relationship between the two entities. And this happens when there is a one-to-many relationship. So right now, if you want to configure mapping, it is not yet supported in the Power Apps Maker Portal. So you would have to switch to uh, the classic environment. And I will show you where you can do that. So if I just close this, and if I go to my classic environment and go to buildings, and let's say if I go to one-to-end relationship, and over here, you will find the one-to-end relationship between building and floor. And if I open that, and here I can go to mappings, okay? So when I click on mappings, you will see uh, that the building ID is uh, mapped to the building ID of the floor, all right? So similarly, if you have some other fields that you want to automatically populate while you're creating a related uh, record, then you can click on new over here and you can configure your mapping over here. So if you we don't have the custom fields right now but if you have you can actually go ahead and you know select the field that you want to map to the targeted entity field all right and then if you click on okay that relation that mapping will be displayed over here and you can save and publish your records so what happens is whenever you um, whenever you created the related record you know just like this building id how it's uh, defaulted Similarly, other fields that you have mapped will also automatically be populated. Now, this only happens while you're creating it from here. Okay, but if you're creating an individual floor record, it won't happen that way. And it and the data is, uh, you know, you can change the data while you have not saved the related record. So once you have saved this record, I mean, for example, if I just uh, save, uh, provide a second floor, let's say, and just save and close. And if I go to this over here, so this is a once only copy to aid the data entry. Now you may need to perform a calculation using one or more fields on your table. Now you can create a calculated field uh, that contains a calculation using the fields from uh, your table and uh, fields from the tables where there is a many to one relationship. 
So in this case, in the buildings, you will notice that I have actually deleted the rental yield field, which was floating point, um, because we'll create a whole number um, calculated field. Also, what I've done is the total area. Uh, this was uh, floating point before, so I've changed the data type and uh, made it to whole number and have some data over here. Okay, so to be able to do that, I will just go to the classic environment and under building, I will go to fields and then I will click on new and create a new field called rental yield. And then in this case, the data type, I would like to choose whole number. And by default, the field type would be simple, but in this case, it's a calculated field. So I will choose calculated. And you can still make some changes over here, but if you click on edit, these fields will be locked, okay? So if you click on edit, it will take you to another page. And here you can put some conditions and the action, okay? So the condition is I want that the total area, there should be a value in the total area field, okay? So if I click uh, add over here, so the entity is a building in my case, and the field should be total area and this should contain data. So I'll just choose contain data. And if this condition is satisfied, I need to perform some action. And the action is to set the rental yield field. So I'll just click on okay here and then click on actions. And then for to set the rental yield field, the calculation is that the value is to be divided by total area. So I will say value that should be divided by total area. And then that's set to okay. So this is my calculate calculation behind the calculated field. So the if the total area, if there's a value in the total area field, then set the rental yield to value divided by total area. And I can save and close this. So once the changes are done, let me just go ahead and publish the changes. I have also gone and added the rental yield field in the views as well as on the forms. So if I go to my app now, so here you will see that the rental yield field is available and it has been, the value has been calculated automatically based on uh, the value field and the total area field. And you will notice that where the total area is not available, the rental field, yield field is, has not been calculated. So let me just open this particular record and then provide a total area field and Please note that all the data over here is hypothetical. So let's say the total area is around 3460 and there is a value over here. And if I click on save, then the rental field, which is locked over here, should be automatically generated. So if I click on save, then you will see that the rental fee yield field is generated. So this is how you can use calculated fields in your system. Okay, so we have discussed the calculated field. Now I want to discuss the role of fields. Now, for example, in my buildings uh, record, I want to create a role of field called total floor area. And what it should do is, for example, it should um, go to all the related floor records and look for um, the field floor area and it should actually roll up all the floor area which is related to that particular building. So to be able to do that, let's just go to our classic designer again. And in the buildings um, table, let's just go to the fields and click on new. And here, let's just define a field called total floor area. And then in this case, we will have this as whole number and the field type as roll up. And what I can do over here is click on edit. And here it will take me to this particular area where I can define, um, you know, the aggregation over here. So the source um, table over here is building. I'm not using any hierarchy. And the related table is the floor. So I can go over here and you can see the floor is already defined. Now optionally, you can also apply for filters. Now I want to choose only those uh, floor records whose status is active. So if I just go over here and click on status and say equals to active, I only want to consider active uh, floor records, not the inactive ones. Okay, and then I can go and specify my calculation over here. 
and the calculation would be based on the sum and the aggregated value I want to calculate is for floor area and then I can click on yes over here. So once that is done, I can save and close this and then I can go ahead and publish the customization. Now what I've also done is also added the fields in the views and the form as well. So now if I go to my app over here and you will see mostly the floor data that is available is only for one building right now, that is Brisbane Sky Tower. So if I go to this particular record, all the floor area would be rolled up and would be calculated over here. Now, since this is a roller field, it takes a little time to populate or what you can do is click on this icon and click on recalculate and it should calculate all the uh, you know floor areas and roll up it over here in a single field. All right. So similarly, if you go to the buildings um, view, you will find that the total floor area is rolled up over here. So that's how you create a roller field and uh, use it to aggregate um, uh, the fields from other related entities. Now, one of the last things that I want to discuss in this training session is about alternate keys. Now, the primary key for each record in uh, Dataverse is the GUID. So, for example, if I go to my building and this um, building ID, which was created when I created the table, is a unique identifier and it's a GUID that the system generates okay so this grid is um, either you can set it when the record is created um, it's uh, either by the developer setting it explicitly or by the power platform that is generating it so in our case is the power platform that has been generating it as soon as we created the table okay now the dataverse allows for alternate keys to be defined um, so an alternate key allows external systems that need to read and write records to efficiently access the records without having to, you know, first run a query to find the GUID. Um, uh, well, as an example, you can say an accounting system often has an alphanumeric account number uh, that uniquely identifies the account. So you can set the account number field in the Dataverse um, uh, you know entity to be an alternate key so that the accounting system can read and write the account using the data it holds in its own system so you can easily uh, define the alternate key and for that what you need to do is under the table you can go to the keys and over here if you add a key you can define an alternate or one or more alternate keys for this particular table all right, so that's how you define the alternate keys over here and you simply choose which fields you want to act as the alternate key. I hope you have enjoyed the training session. Now, everything that I have discussed in this session has an element of my experience. However, you can find most of the content on docs.microsoft.com and I would highly recommend you to go through the resources which is shown on your screen. Now, this session will also be available on my YouTube channel, Tech Quantum where you can uh, you know, revisit the content again, and I will be sharing the details on my LinkedIn group, which is 365 Pros. Again, thank you very much for your participation. You can connect with me on my LinkedIn, and I would request you to join the LinkedIn group 365 Pros, where I will be posting details of more upcoming sessions. Now, it's a very new group where we are trying to connect with interested people like you, and also have team participation in future. You can also subscribe to the YouTube channel Tech Quantum, where I already have a lot of free content available and new contents are posted quite frequently. I hope you have a lovely day. Bye for now.